This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Hi, my name is Daniel Greenfield and this is the Glazov Gang's uh, Greenfield Moment. Uh, today we're going to discuss feminism and the events in Cologne. Feminism is very, very concerned about rape culture all the time. They're concerned about offensive t-shirts and offensive ads, but they don't seem very, very concerned about what happened in Germany and in cities across Europe where violent Muslim migrant mobs in Cologne, Berlin, and Hamburg were the products of an actual rape culture dating back to Muhammad's injunction to his men that Muslim women must wear burqas to avoid being molested while non-Muslim women captured in the Dial Harb, the house of war, could be raped by Muslim jihadis at will. They're not particularly concerned about that. Big feminism has a great deal of interest in rape as an abstract idea. They can be unpacked to represent everything that the left hates from Valentine's Day to environmental degradation to the college fraternity. But it has very interest in rape as a crime, as a personal crime, or rape victims as people. That's why feminism failed the women of Cologne, it failed women of Germany, it failed the women of Europe. Take Eve Ensler, who has exploited the idea of rape to build up her brand, while her PR was being handled by Trevor Fitzgibbon, a progressive sexual predator uh, whose company really recently had to be taken apart and was at the time also representing Julian Assange, another progressive rapist. Events were had a great deal of interest in rape as an ideological tool, as a political weapon, but none in the women who were being raped but her political allies. Feminism ultimately is only another of the many manipulative masks that the left wears. Its acolytes cannot see rape as a personal crime, only as an ideological offense. To the left, rape, like racism, is a form of institutional oppression practiced by the stronger white male against everyone else. Sexual assaults that don't fit the structural template won't be acknowledged, and when they become so public that they must be acknowledged, it will be only to change the conversation. Uh, the Guardian ran a piece by Gabby Hinsel, a feminist, who said that uh, the women in Germany who were assaulted were very lucky, they had smartphones, they had expensive smartphones, and the Muslim men who attacked them were oppressed, they were migrants, they were just scraping by, and it was perfectly understandable that they would lash out at the lucky young women with smartphones. The essential argument is that the women had it coming because they were prosperous Europeans and the men were Muslim, oppressed Muslims. And the process is already underway in Europe as feminists insist that the coverage of the Muslim rape mob attackers is distracting attention from all the subjects that they would like to talk about. There were the obligatory feminist protests that emphasized opposition to racism uh, before sexism, and they did not mean the form of racism that led large numbers of Assam seekers to see native women as fair game to be abused, degraded, and spit on, but the racism involved in calling Islam out for it. The hundreds of women who were attacked in a single day by Muslim mobs are inconvenient victims, like the Peace Corps workers abused by the locals where they go to help, or female activists raped by the Palestinian Muslims they came to help. Their stories don't fit the intersectional paradigm and have to be covered up in the politically correct burqa. Big feminism joined with the left in crying for the migration of a horde of young Muslim men from a culture where sexual assault and harassment are ubiquitous. They brought them over to the cities of Europe. Feminism forcibly introduced the women of Europe to their rapists and then left the grinning mobs to get on with their work on New Year's Eve. Now it complains that the women it victimized are a distraction from the much more important conversations we'd like to have about convincing everyone to fight rape culture by buying $40 I am a feminist t-shirts. Underneath feminism is the rotten leftist creed which says that all evils originate with the West. It is as impossible for a mainstream feminist in good standing with the political sisterhood to acknowledge what truly happened in Cologne and commiserate with the victims as it was for a communist to admit that there was no food because the centralized bureaucracy of senile socialist civil servants is not the best possible way to run an economy. They cannot even truly admit the crime until they have redirected the blame to the old standby bogeyman on which all Muslim atrocities since the gates of Vienna have been blamed, failure to integrate due to European intolerance. Big feminism's refusal to advocate for women outside the narrow ideological framework of the left is not a new phenomenon, unfortunately. It not only provided cover for politically correct predators like Bill Clinton and Ted Kennedy, not to mention a legion of lesser-known names like Planned Parenthood's favorite politician Bob Filner or Trevor Fitzgibbon, whom we just mentioned, uh, they gave them a blank check for their crimes against women but actually went on to endanger women across entire cities and countries. 
Feminist opposition to rape had already been compromised by the left's pro-crime platform, leading it to reject anti-crime and sentencing solutions that would actually work. The left's multicultural components isolated the focus on rapes where the perpetrator was likely to be a straight white male, which is why we have such a focus on college campuses. The high rates of sexual assault and housing projects on tribal reservations had to be ignored because there was no way to use them to indict white men. While white men, who obviously, like anybody else, are capable of committing any crime, feminism's refusal to cross intersectional third rails at best abandoned countless women of all races and groups to the abuses of politically correct predators. At worst, big feminism aided and abetted their rapists. This indictment is not uniquely directed at feminism, where both Jewish and Christian groups, uh, gay, alongside gay and feminist groups, vocally advocated for the entry of millions of Muslim migrants whose contempt for women's rights was only exceeded by their loathing for Christians, their seething hatred for Jews, and their violent distaste of gays. Gay feminist and liberal Jewish and Christian groups worked overtime to fill their countries with the demographic most likely to commit hate crimes against them. Like big feminism, these other arms of the left sold out the very groups they claimed to represent in order to fulfill the larger agenda of the left. Feminism does not exist to help women, just as credit cards don't exist to help you save money. That is a service that they provide on certain specific terms buried within documents and the fine print to solicit paying customers. Like your bank, feminism may occasionally help women within very specific intersectional terms buried within its social justice documentation. Banks serve their shareholders, not their customers. Feminism serves its softest shareholders, who are not necessarily even women, who want earnest young female college students to feel that there's the face of the, the vast multinational big brother or big sister left looking out for them. As hundreds of European women found out on New Year's Eve in its aftermath, that is a lie. The left does not help women, the left only helps the left. Beneath the slick advertising, the designs that lend the illusion of the personal to the impersonal, and the touching video narratives is a soul of an ideological machine whose ideologues are trained to allocate empathy in tune with a rigid set of rules that are as inflexible and inhuman as any Soviet commissar's handbook. The left is not in the business of caring but of coordinating, and it exploits empathy to gain recruits only to mandate the things they're out to care about in a coordinated ideological fashion as part of the political party program. Big feminism, along with the rest of its leftist partners, created the conditions that led to the Muslim attacks on women on New Year's Eve. And feminists are reading the cover-up of the crisis they caused and continue to worsen by advocating for even more refugee admissions. As long as feminism remains a slave to the left, it will be responsible for causing more women to be assaulted and raped. And then it will cover up the crimes and use the victims to sell more red t-shirts. As Cologne, where over 100 women were assaulted in one day, reminds us that feminism and thrall to the left is one of the biggest threats to women. This has been the Daniel Greenfield Moment. If you enjoyed listening to this, please subscribe to the Glasov Gang and help support the show. Have a good night.